All right, Council, you may call the witness. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Commissioners, I call Mr. Ndambu Ture. I swear by the Almighty Allah. I swear by the Almighty Allah. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. That the evidence that I shall give to this commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. So help me Allah. Okay. Could you kindly state your names? My name is Ndambu Ture. Where do you live, Mr. Ture? I live at Tranquil. What work do you do? I, I am a retired banker. Where did you retire from? I retired from Trust Bank Limited. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Mr. Turi, are you completely retired or do you... I am completely retired. You are not director of any organization? No, no, no. When did you retire? I retired on the 31st of December 2015. How long, um, which position did you hold before you retired? I was the head of foreign operations of Crossbank. For how long? Uh, this was since uh, inception from... Uh, when it was uh, uh, repossessed by the central bank and sold to Trust Bank Limited. That's when uh, I think it was uh, around 1997 or 96. But before that, I was, still, I was the head of foreign operation for Meridian International. For Meridian Bank? Yeah, yeah. And before that? Before that, uh, you know, I tell you, my banking career spanned uh, from the then Gambia Commercial and Development Bank way back in 1975 and then to Continent Bank where I worked for about two years exact. and then I was uh, uh, taken over by Meridian International. You were someone with regard to Trust Bank Limited accounts. Okay. Um, in the course of your duties or your work as head of the foreign department, yes. Did you have cause to deal with the ex president? Did I have? Sorry. Did I have? Did you have cause to deal with the? Did you deal with the ex president? 
Well, I, deal, I dealt with accounts, and some of them, I think I remember, one of, one of them I know was Yaya Jame's own account. Did you deal with the ex-president? I have never met him personally. Okay. I dealt with an account that was named Yaya AJJ Jame. Right. Um, we'll, we'll start with an account called MYJ Family Trust. Yes. Do you remember this account? I remember the account. Um, who did you deal with with regard to this account? Well, I know, you know, uh, my department, we don't actually establish accounts. We don't open accounts. We simply conduct transactions in accounts in the books of Trust Bank. Yeah, but my question was, who did you deal with? with well, I know the account holder was one uh, Mr. Hodrosh. You dealt with Mr. Hodrosh? Hodrosh, yes. yes. In what way did you deal with him? Uh, by way of request for transfers overseas. You dealt with him? Yes. Um, and you handled these transactions? Yes, the transactions went through me as the head of the operation. What do you know about Mr. Hodridge, Ahmed Hodridge? Ahmed Hodridge, I know he came to the Gambia and at one time he was working for Euro-African. Euro-African Euro group, Limited. Group. group Limited? Yes. Okay, they are your customer at the bank as they well? They are our customers, yes. Uh, um, do you know what capacity he, uh, he I didn't know what what was his uh, you know position at Euro African at the time. Did he conduct transactions on behalf of Euro Africa Group? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sorry, did you were not sure? Did he no, to I'm the not extent sure. that he did transfers? Did he conduct transactions? With Euro African I am not sure. I am sure. certain uh, on the on the MYG family trust account, yes he did. What is the MYJ Family Trust account? I think the meaning is Mariam Yaya Jame Family Trust. That's the short name. Uh, that's the full long, the full name. I believe it was just uh, sorted. Do you know what the purpose of this trust was? I, d I really don't know. I'm going to give you the account documents. Okay. That's the M MYJ Mariam Yahya Jami, as you said, Family Trust Account, mm -hmm. BB 107. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just to refresh your memory, I would like you to look at those transactions. Mm We note, uh, Mr. Ture, that all the monies that went into that account were foreign exchange cash. Yes. I believe your department would be responsible where foreign exchange cash was brought into the bank. Yes, they will actually come and deposit the funds in my department through mm -hmm. the cashiers. Okay. So that was common practice. You just accept well, cash. Well, you know, well, in the Gambia, it has a, has a cash-based economy. Mm. That was very common. Bring cash into the bank yes, and deposit. Yes, very common. Mm. One million dollars. Yes. Was there any process, procedure where a customer works in and wishes to deposit one million dollars? I will tell you until until uh, around the 2014, going to 2015, it was not common to ask questions as to the whereabouts of the funds. It was not common. But after that, I believe there is a real due diligence now for people to establish sources of funds. But before that, it was common practice that people come in and just lodge in foreign currency. That is why in this country we do a lot of shipments, and that is on a weekly basis, because we have to replenish our accounts overseas. So basically, you're saying Mr. Hodrick then just came and deposited this fund. Yes. Did he tell you why he, because if you look at the transactions within a span of a month, mm -hmm. he deposited about four million. Yes. And also transferred. Yes. About the same amount. Yeah. Did he tell you why he was making these transfers? Really, uh, he did not tell me anything, you know. Uh, 
he didn't tell me anything. He didn't indicate reasons for the transfer. And, uh, you know, as you can see, under normal circumstances, whatever is not normal and a swift transfer, you know, if you send it, it wouldn't go. But it was normal that people can come in and just make a transfer without giving reasons. Maybe now the system may have changed. That now you cannot transfer without giving reasons for the transfer. But it wasn't mandatory at the time to give reasons. You did not ask? Well, uh, you know, I I'll tell you, frankly speaking, I don't think I would like to ask because if I ask, I don't know where it ends. The suspicion is there, but I don't have to ask. What, what do you mean? I, I know, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't really... You because the funds are available in his account, and he wants to transfer the funds, I couldn't ask much. Uh, Mr. Ture, uh, um, the, the monies that were transferred to Paragon Title mm -hmm. Escrow, which is about 3.5. Yes. It's three three million five hundred and sixty-two, something like that. Three million five hundred and sixty something. Yes. I note I note in the telex messages or the telex treaty that was attached mm -hmm. that nothing was stated, but in the transfer for two hundred thousand. Yes. To Mr. Ahmed Hodridge himself. Yes. yes. It says residential loan purchase of property. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That one reason was given. Okay. Yes. So you're saying where well, reason is, it's up to the customer if he wishes to yeah, give a because reason. because it wasn't mandatory in the SWIFT system to give reasons. I know now they must have upgraded the software. That you don't put in a reason, it will not go. And also for the leasing of the plane, exactly. it says leasing of a plane. At least, yes. That one, the reason was given. But for the rest of the transfers, it just says no NYJ Family Trust. Yes. There is a particular transfer dated 13th of August, mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. Can you look at it? 13th of August? Yes, 2010. 75,000? No, actually. No, it's, $1 it's a host of, yes. The one for it's, $1 million. Okay, okay. Do you see it? Yes, I, I think on the 13th of August, it's, uh, it's about, okay, it's about three transactions. I'm talking about the, um, if you look at Oh, the, okay, the one million, that's Mr. on the 18th. Mr. Mr. Ture, Mr. Ture, yes. just listen. Yes. If you look at the Trust Bank Limited form. The Trust Bank Limited form? Yes, ah, that okay. was filled out, 13 August okay. 2010. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, yes, I've seen that. You've seen it? Yes. Um, by the way, the handwriting on all the forms looks similar. Whose handwriting is this? The handwritings on the form, the calculation is myself. The handwriting on the form? Yes, the calculation is myself. What about the handwriting? The handwriting, I think this one might be the applicant himself. It's done by? The applicant. Himself? Yes. The calculation here is me. Okay. The calculation which says two yeah. twenty-eight million dollars. Twenty-eight million, blah blah, and so forth. Yes. Okay. Now, under the in the form where it says reference or any other information necessary for beneficiary to apply funds, mm -hmm. we have M Y J Family Trust. Yes. And then something is written, and then it's um, scratched. This one must have been done by the applicant. I can see yes, deposit something, and then he actually crossed it off. Possibly he doesn't want us to know. Could be deposit for what? I cannot read it myself. You cannot read it? No. It seems to be saying purchase of property. Do you that's agree? That's right. Maybe he, that's right. So he probably Mr. was Mr. right. Ture, yes. Um, it seems to be saying purchase of property. Do you agree? Well, uh, yes. If you read it properly, look at it properly, it seems, yes. But as you can see, it was crossed out, you know. Maybe he doesn't want us to put it in there. 
Mr. Today, did Mr. Ahmed Hodraj tell you at any time that he was purchasing property for, for using these funds? He did not. He did not? He did not. But then we suspected, you, suspected. you know, afterwards, like any Gambian, that it was a purchase of something in the U.S. You suspected what, sorry? Like, we suspected that this was probably going to us the purchase of a property. Why did you suspect it was going for well, the purchase of a property? because after all, it became public knowledge that, you know, the former head of state has a house in Washington, D.C. Based on that public knowledge that you suspected then that the monies were used for the purchase yes, of property? Yes, yes, yes. There's a transaction which says shipment and there's a fee of $4,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that transaction? Uh, the because shipment, shipment, shipment means shipping money. Yeah, shipping money overseas. Two, yes. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Uh, I remember that one was uh, the funds that were lodged in by Euro Africa. Okay. The, for payment of uh, maybe some of their supplies at a later date. It was funds that were, sorry, I didn't. These were funds that were deposited by were Euro African deposited. Group. Yeah. So they deposited these funds into this account? Yes. And they asked that it be shipped? Yeah. Did this account have anything to do with Euro Africa Group? No, uh, with Euro African. I know that the funds that were deposited are U were Euro African mm -hmm. funds. They have nothing to do with MYJ Trust. Okay. How much were the funds? It was about 200,000, but I remember, you know, I think authority was given because at the end of the day, I think the, the MYJ family trust account was overdrawn by about $4,000. And we were told to move $4,000 to offset that overdrawing on the, Euro, on, the, on the MYJ account. So you can see the relationship. Um, Ahmed Hodrej was also signatory to some of the K KGI accounts. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know much about that one. You cannot remember? No. Okay, we'll call you back. Don't worry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions for Mr. Turek on this. Mr. Turek, yes. just a quick one. Uh, we were all in the market. It became public knowledge there was a property purchase in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back on the question regarding the link uh, to MYJ and Euro African, now, did you suspect anything with respect to being a reason for these transactions? Was there some kind of facilitation fee, motivation? W w what did you have? as a bank as possible reasons? You know, I said here that uh, Mr. Hodrosh, I know at one time worked for Euro-African Group. And uh, afterwards, uh, you know, I'm not sure whether he moved out of the group or was doing something else. But then, the re the, uh, why I, uh, I can uh, relate the two is because I don't see reasons why Euro-African would transfer $4,000 to offset an overdrawing in the MYJ account. So, unless if they want to give them, just dust them some money. So which I, which a normal businessman doesn't do. Well, Your African will not throw away well, money well, like that. This is it. Uh, yeah, I know I will not give us $4,000 just like that. It was with somebody that I know and, uh, you know, I want to help. So you think they were helping the president? <laughs> I am not saying they were helping the president. I am saying they may be helping Hamid Hodrosh because he's the, he's the one connected with this account, as far as I know. Who's helping Ahmed Hodrosh? Ahmed was the giver. 
Ahmed, no, 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 no. Ahmed is not the giver of the 4,000. Euro African is the giver of the 4,000. Represent to Ahmed Odrich. Ahmed was the MD. Yes. Of, no, no. Ahmed, what I know is Ahmed was the, was, uh, was the guy in charge of the MYG account. And what Whether was he was the MD of Euro African, I didn't know that. Okay, you didn't know Ahmed's no, occupation. No, no. But Ahmed. I know he, he worked for them. But it stated on record that he was the MD. Okay, I don't know that one. That one may be beyond me. Okay. Yeah. Euro African. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just one question, Mr. Mr. Turi. Yeah. Uh, when you say the account is called Mariam Yahya, the full name of the account is Mariam Yahya Jami. Yes, Mariam Trust Yahya Jami. Trust account. Yes. Who is Mariam Yahya Jami? Uh, we know that I think uh, the ex-president has a, so a daughter called Mariam. Okay. The first daughter of the president is named Mariam. <laughs> What does the account name, Mariam Yahya Jame, trust account, suggest to you, if anything? Really, no. No, I don't. As a banker? As a banker, What did know, it suggest it, to you, Mariam Yahya Jame, trust account? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, really, I don't want it's to... It's a serious question, Mr. Ture. <laughs> you are a banker. You, an account was opened in your bank. You are head of foreign department. Yes. And you transferred in the name of Mariam Yahya Jami. No. The sum of 3.5 million. Yes. As you precisely said, 3,562,000. Yes. To United States, to what yes. looks like a real estate company, Paragon uh, Title and Esco yes. Company. Yes. In Washington. Yes. What did the name suggest to you, if anything? No. You know, uh, I will tell you something. If, if I have a son or a daughter and I may decide to, you know, move some of my things over to uh, to him or her before my death. I don't know. Maybe. I know that there is a relation now because Mariam doesn't have the capacity to raise those funds. If the funds have been raised, then somebody is preparing Mariam for something. That's my suspicion. During the period you were head of foreign department, yes, there were other transfers to Mariam Yahya Jame Trust. Other transfers from Mariam Yahya Jame Trust? Yes. Were there? Uh, okay. You mean cash deposits? No, to transfers Diaka? from Gambia to... To Mariam Anak Yahya Jame. Yes. And there could be. I cannot uh, say for certain because I don't have any documents here to say. Very well. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for the witness. I'm interested, if you know, <laughs> in the period uh, during which you interacted with Mr. Hodrich. Do you remember what year he was an employee of Euro-African? It's very difficult, very difficult to really indicate uh, the year. To the best of your memory? I would say it's not very, it's not very far from the time he started because I know that he was an employee of Euro African before this Mariam Yai Jametros. Exactly. So it must have been within the year 2009, 2008. 2009. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mr. Turi, just one, one, one question, please. Um, I know there's the Anti Money Laundry Act, which came into effect, I think, in 2012. Yeah. Um, were any of these um, deposits, huge sums paid into the accounts or withdrawals um, communicated to the regulators? Mm -hmm. Was it ever flagged um, to the regulators? I will tell you, uh, the flagging actually uh, came into effect. We started having a problem in the, you know, 2013 going towards 2014. Then they would ask reasons for this. Mm -hmm. You can see this one, there has not been any reason. They didn't ask. It didn't, uh, you know, uh, actually catch the attention of the anti-money laundering uh, people. Otherwise, they would have come back to us to ask reasons, and we would have been compelled to give reasons. And they, it would have been attacked. And then internally, I think, you, I'm not sure if you mentioned, internally at Trust Bank itself, no, mm -hmm. reason, no questions were asked. No, no, no. We got our, you know, our, you know, 
anti-money laundering guys. Uh, I think the, the office was set up uh, around the, it's, it's very active around 2014, 2015, not before this time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now it is, uh, you want to transfer this one, so you have to ex explain. As a career banker, yeah. do you believe the central bank played a role in all these control lapses? If the regulator had taken another view, mm -hmm. had been tougher or had enforced mm -hmm. governance standards, mm -hmm. you know, supervisory oversight, mm -hmm. we, we would not have been in this situation. So from your experience, what would be one particular recommendation with regards to compliance you can make? No, I tell you, personally, I have not been in favor of open account trading. I have not been in favor of that. Because you don't know. And in okay. fact, the, 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 the central bank would not be able to track the inflows and outflows. That's my opinion. But there was a view that this country should promote a liberal market philosophy. I now, believe were we too liberal and allowed think, a lot of things? I think we were too liberal. Frankly speaking, I believe even in terms of trading, I have always said to people, you know, you know, do the trading through the banking system. And that is by way of either bills for collection or letters of credit then we, you don't have questions to this. Every bank, the importing bank, the exporting bank, will all, you know, take care of their customers. You will know your customer before you transact. You see? Hmm. But then uh, I think it was, it, it's just too liberal. On the profit side, I know that banks that ask a lot of questions I tell you, risk losing uh, business. Yes, that is true. So on the profit side, uh -huh. was it also a reason why you overlook a lot of things because the more you ask questions the more business you lost uh, i tell you uh, i'm not sure we would have lost so much you know but uh, we would have in fact we would have been able to collect more because it would have everything would have been coming through our system even if you have to have an ad advance payment towards the purchase of anything you will have to go through the banking system you're doing final payment you go through the banking system we know that it's a caste-based economy. There's nothing, there's not much we can do on that one. Maybe with time, it will change. But until then, this country operation, even the tourist season, they come in with a lot of cash. What do you do? But notwithstanding, there should be some controls in place with regards to importations. Yeah. Thank you. Is that all from you, Council? Yeah. Well. Very well. You may you leave. Have, yes. Thank you. Uh, I believe you have one, some minutes. Uh, there's a short witness. Short. Okay. Okay. Who is, who would I, uh, I call Katish. Mr. Kat Katish Kat Sharma. Tata Motors. <coughs>
well, I'm moving. I swear by the Almighty God. I swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. That the evidence which I will give to the commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing than the truth. So help me God. To help me God. Good afternoon. Could you could you kindly state your names? Sorry, no? State your names. What is your name? My name is Kartush Sharma. Can you spell it? K A R T I S H. That's the first name. My last name is Sharma. S H A R M A. S H A M. S H A R M A. R M A. Where do you live? Live in Kotu. Kotu. What What work do you do? I'm a manager at Safari Motors. It's a dealer of Tata vehicles. They are manager of of Safari Motors. Safari Motors. Yeah, it's an authorized dealership for Tata vehicles. You said it's an authorized? Authorized dealership for Tata vehicles. Authorized. I don't get the, the word that follows Tata. authorized. Tata Motors. Tata. Dealership. Tata Motors. Okay. Sorry, authorized? They deal with Tata. Tata Motors. T-A-T-A. Yes. Authorized, authorized dealers. Authorized dealers. Dealer. Dealership uh, for Tata Motors. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Would you like to sit down? Safari Motors, is, is it a, what is it? Well, it's a dealership for Tata vehicles. We sell and uh, yeah, what is it? Is it a business, a company? What 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 is it? Sole it's enterprise? What is it? It's a partnership company. It's a partnership. Yeah. A partnership between who? Between three. Uh, actually, it was uh, five for Safari Motors, five partners, Indian partners. Five Indian partners. Yeah. Would you would like me to mention the names? Yes, if you would. Okay. It's Mr. Manish Chilokani. Uh, what we will do, we'll give you a piece of paper, you write it down. Yeah, I can do that. Yes. Could you give him a piece of paper, we'll, he will write them down. Um, you, can, you can state the names, then we will give you a paper to write them before okay. you leave. Okay, it's Mr. Manish Telokani, mm -hmm. Mr. Nandkishore Rajwani, mm -hmm. and Mr. Sunil Gehani, Mr. Ram Mohan, and Mr. Dalat Aswani. These are the partners. These are the five partners for Safari Motors. Is it a partnership or is it a registered company? It's a registered company. It's a registered yeah. company. So they are the shareholders. Yeah. Okay. We would, after this um, session, we would like you to send in the memorandum and articles as well as the certificate of incorporation and yeah. business. No problem. Um, thank you very much. No. Now, you were summoned in relation to um, John Deere tractors. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you provided some documents to the investigators. Do you have copies of what you provided yeah, to the investigators? You have? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell this commission your involvement with these tractors? Okay. I would like to start from the starting. Uh, as we are Safari Motors, we are dealers in Tata vehicles. Now you have, you know, um, unfortunately for me, I have some difficulty with your accent. So you have to speak slowly. Speak All right? Slowly, okay. Just speak slowly. Thank you. Okay. I want to start from the starting. We are dealers in uh, Tata, Tata vehicles only. So in uh, 2012, we started the business in 2009. In 2012, there was a delegation from John Deere. I have the names with me, the people who came to our dealership. A delegation from John Deere. John Deere. We have a list of the names of the people who came with the delegation from South Africa and um, they were actually coming for 
just checking up our garage after sales service and uh, then they went back they went back to all the garages in the Gambia then they came back to us asking us if we can give them a backup on John Deere tractors which they have already sold to the government they had already sold they the have tractors. already sold it to the government the transaction between the government and John Deere was already done when they came to us so they were just asking for after sales backup when the tractors have been supplied like assembling and some other stuff like if it is having repairs to be needed so we took an agency of it for two years we took an agency with them we took an agency years. because it was a it was like a condition if you want to back them up we have to take the agency from John Deere so that it will be a, like a partnership between Safari Equip Enterprises that's what we opened as a sister concern to this company so you opened a, another company it's a sister concern it's a called sister Safari. Concern. Yes, yeah, I it's, it's Safari Equip Enterprises was is a registered concern sorry ma'am is it registered yeah it's registered so give you repeat the name Safari Safari Equip Equip Enterprises Enterprises we have three shareholders on this we have three shareholders on this mr. that I can write it down for you you have three shareholders yes, yes. can you state their names yes mr. Manish Telukani mr. Sunil Gehani and mr. Nand Kishore Rajwani okay um, I don't hear the name of John Deere they, are, they were not shareholders on this concern yes where are they shareholders not John Deere my Indian bosses my Indian directors okay. all right so the shareholders of Safari Motors some of the shareholders of Safari Motors set up this Safari Equip Enterprises, Equip Enterprises because we were not allowed to to sell any other brand than Tata if we are holding Safari Motors so we had yes. to open sister concerns so you had to have another vehicle for that yeah all right so you set up Safari Equip Enterprises. Yes. Yes. So um, this was set up afterwards. It's just a summary to you that how it happened. Uh, they came to us and they asked for a backup. We agreed to it. They was they agreed to pay us the assembling of the tractors, what they have already sold to the government. Now the uh, the tractors were well, five of the tractors were already at the state house at Banjul. 500? No, five tractors. Sorry, how many tractors? Five. Five were already at the state house in Banjul. Five we found it at the state house already and 78 were shipped. 78 were shipped and was brought to MS, MSC. Uh, that's the... Uh, Maintenance service. Uh, that's next to Kuru Power Station, there's a workshop. A maintenance service agency. Exactly. Yes. So they were brought there and our part and our role in that was to assemble it and to give it over to John Deere people to hand it over to Ministry of Agriculture. To hand it over to? Ministry of Agriculture. So how many did you assemble? We assembled um, 78 tractors and five was already assembled at the state house. So we just went there to assemble the, the equipment which was already there in State House. Okay. So I think I have written uh, the letter which I wrote, it's stating the, the equipment, what we received. Yeah. Okay. The letter you wrote said you assembled 80, total 83 units of tractors, yes, 96 sir. cultivators, 38 seed planters, 10 units of 5 ton tipping trailers, 54 integral harrow, 7 MP254 row planters, and 65 mounted sprayers. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's correct. All right. Uh, Could you put, put it's together? Actually, it's actually uh, it's a typing error. Instead of 10 tipping trailers, it was 18. 18 tipping trailers. Yeah. I wrote another letter, I think, uh, it's to rectify it. I've already submitted to the commission. You have rectified it? Yeah. But I will check your documents after you finish. Okay. So, uh, 
that's where we we signed a memorandum of understanding between John Deere and Safari Equip Enterprises. And you have the agreement that yeah, you I have signed. The, I have okay. it with me. It was a memorandum of understanding that we are taking the agency. Uh, we are also responsible for repairing, selling in future, and any kind of problems which government can face, we were there to back them up for that. Did you say selling? Selling, yes. In future. In future. Yeah. Like if you take an agency, of course, in, you may have prospective customers for John Deere tractors. So that's what they were expecting from us. But the whole scenario was it did not go well. Because uh, John Deere promised us, John Deere promised us that they are going to uh, install GPS, uh, GPS units on the tractors so that we can have a track on the tractors wherever they are. If they are broke down, we can take care of it. But nothing worked according to what was planned. Because the handing over was not done by us. The handing over was done by John Deere itself. Was done by who? John Deere. Handed over to who? To, to Ministry of Agriculture. After everything was assembled yeah. with the accessories. Sorry? With, with the accessories. With the accessories, yes. Yeah. Accessories, everything was handed over to Ministry of Agriculture. I have some names with me. You have the documents showing to whom they were handed over yes. at the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. Yes. Could you tell us who they were handed over to? One of them is uh, Mr. Usainu Job. Mr. Usainu Job. And the other one is Mr. Minte. Mr. Mr. Minte, let me just find out the full yes, name. Yes, please find out the full name. <clears throat> Mr. Mustafa Minte. Mustafa Minte. Yes. Okay. And Mr. Usainu Job, and they are from Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. They were the one appointed by the Ministry of Agriculture to take care of these equipments and to distribute them in different regions. I have some of the delivery note given by Ministry of Agriculture to Mr. Usainu Job, and he have delivered some some of them. But we were not supposed to be responsible for these things. These are just. Um, some documents which I have which may help the Commission to find out about these things. According to your delivery note, how many were delivered? All of them. All of them were delivered? All of them. Um, okay, we will receive your documents. Yeah, this um, file is for you. You can uh, for the Commission. Well. Okay. So what is in the file? It's memorandum of understanding between Safari Mo uh, Equip and uh, John Deere. It's having application for duty waivers when we were uh, going to, when we were clearing the things out from the ports. Some of them was on our name, some of them was on Ministry of Agriculture, some of them are on GGC, Gambia Groundnut Company, cooperation or whatever it is. And did you uh, clear? But did you clear all of them from the ports? No, not uh, all of them we cleared. Whatever we cleared, we have receipts and everything in this file. And GPS system was at the airport, which was, we were not in, informed that it's at the airport. It was supplied by Unique Solutions. And Unique Solutions was handing over to John Deere. That's also the handing over letter is there with us. That's the GPS system, you said? Yes, GPS and some other... PTO pumps. So why didn't the GPS system not work on the tractors? No, because it was never installed. It was at the airport and it almost four months or six months demolages were there and we didn't uh, have a good conversation with John Deere about this. So what happened to the GPS system? It was handed over to John Deere and then John Deere handed over to, uh, to government according to John Deere. To government? It's written here. It's a handing, handed over letter okay. with me. All right. Very well. And we have terminated the uh, the contract between John Deere and us in 2015. 
because of uh, the the process and the tractors the maintenance was not going according to what we expected so apart from these 83 units of tractors with their accessories did you handle any other john deere tractors no ma'am we only had uh, six to seven demo versions which was given to us by john deere demo versions sorry like, six to uh, seven we only had six to seven equipments which was given by john deere as joining the agency it's a demo version is a free of cost thing to given to our company that was demo version not in the stock for the government all right okay I also have a bank statement. I have a bank statement for our company, Safari Equip, which we got paid by John Deere for assembling the tractors and helping them whatever like they require there. Yes, it's just one. Can, can we receive the documents from the witness? Is there any indication of how, what was the cost of these 83 units of tractors? Ma'am, we, we do not have any invoices how much it was sold and who paid and how paid we, we don't have any information about can you collect that. the documents please thank you could you write out the names yeah. of the five and the three yeah, I can. that you mentioned for the record Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I apply to have admitted documents produced by Safari Motors? Sorry, Gila. Safari Motors. Ma'am, Safari Motors is not involved in this, so I did not bring that one. I can provide it. It's the letterhead is on Safari Motors' letterhead. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because ma'am... Your letter to the Commission is from Safari Motors. Yes. But you have made the explanation? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's on record. Okay, thank right. you. Mr. Chairman, may I apply to have admitted documents produced by Safari Motors? Um, assist uh, enterprise or concern of Safari Equip Enterprises with regard to John Deere tractors that were assembled by Safari Equip Enterprises and according to the witness delivered to the Ministry of Agriculture. Source of party motors, then managing director, and these are for Safari equipment. Three. These are John Deere relation. This is John Deere relation. This is Safari motors.
excuse me. folder with an assortment of documents, including a bank statement for Safari Enterprises Savings Account relating to Safari Motors slash John Deere tractors, admitted mark MS139. That's all for the witness, Mr. Chairman. I can go? Wait. <laughs> Wait for the chair. That will rise and will Sorry. back at. Half, is, is, the half past two. is the witness discharged, Mr. Chairman? The, or you have yeah, questions? the witness is discharged. Yes. You may leave. You may go. All right. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank day. you.